Alrighty, here we are. All systems go. And let me fix my wonky Garmin on screen. <laughs> Perfect. Bit of green screen trickery there to bring in uh, the other power meter that I'm testing tonight, the Suji. I believe that's how you pronounce it. I'll roll with Suji. So Titan's Grove, uh, 10 minute warm up, into the Llama Lab test, and we'll see how it pans out. Good evening, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. Um, if you're ever on Twitch, you're gonna get the best quality um, stream from what I put out here, but Facebook doesn't look too bad. YouTube, no, I can live with you, YouTube. Uh, we're also running the stud, it's all. So we can throw a few elbows, but tonight it's all about uh, Kicker 5, which you see on the Zwift pairing screen there, and the Suji power meter. Now they're both on three second average. They will never be exactly the same, but they should be pretty close, pretty close. Uh, RPM from the Suji as well. So I thought I'd bring in some um, some really, some live, live Llama Lab testing. Uh, the proof's in the pudding afterwards though, when we get to the nitty gritty of the data. I also have the Asiomas on the bike. I couldn't be bothered putting three Garmin's on the screen. I'll do a bit of work, but not too much work. Energy best put into the pedals. I hope everyone is well. Uh, DI2 is on my old the giant now. I have done the conversion. It is brilliant. I am loving it. If I close my eyes, I couldn't tell between my old TCR and my new one, which is exactly what I was after. One of those crisp, clean gear changes that, like that, you probably can't hear that, but it's, it's crisp, it's clean. And it was a good few hours in the garage, away from the keyboard, away from social media. Me just tinkering with bikes. Doesn't get any better than that. If it's also raining here because it's the middle of winter. So time well spent. And I've already got some upgrades for the group set I've just put on yesterday. So we'll talk about those later. We'll get the nearest done on those. But all is well. Okay, where are we at? Chat. Oh, and uh, I found out how to do uh, moderation in the chat for... Uh, for Twitch as well, so we have some mod settings on there. If you recall last uh, last live stream, we had an interesting character come in there and flex. I don't know what he was flexing. He's banned and blocked. But anyway, we, we figured that out. So kudos to that troll who made me go and learn a little bit more about Twitch. So my experience on Twitch is better, and your experience as viewers and commentators and commenters and everything is better as well. All right, no Twitch, it should be on Twitch. Hey, hey, from Twitch, there we go. Using Restream, there we go, cool, cool. Not sure why that wouldn't have gone out. I click the same button on everything. And it goes out. All right, let's get into this. I've got to get the warm up done. It's a little bit later here than normal, 8.16 in the, af in the afternoon, yeah. In summer, effectively, we'd call this the afternoon, hey, hey. Throwing elbows. The steering, eh. When it's taken, oh Siri, no, no. Siri, shut up. Huh. Um, when you don't use it, you miss it. If you've never had it, you, it doesn't really matter. Solo riding, it's just fun to take better lines. And riding up Von 2, the other day I did a, an interval session and I got out of the conga line. Whee! Everybody's on the conveyor belt going up one side. So this allows me to jump onto the middle of the road and ride up to my own line. It was nice. Uh, the RJ11 or RJ25 port, it might be technically. No, we're not going to be able to make any use of that on the Kicker 5 until Wahoo makes something of it. Just looking quickly at those numbers there. What you'll find is the, the drop off is different between power meters. So the average on three seconds. So when things are going up and down, up and down, as you can see with the graph here, it will be a little different. Erg mode's where it's at with the sustained efforts. And we'll be doing 200 for 10, 250 for 10. If I get through, I'm a little hungry. I haven't had dinner. How are we looking for power? It's, it's not too bad. Well, zero offset. I won't be doing a spin down on the five. 
<sighs> but all good. Uh, no plans on using round versus oval chain rings whatsoever, no. I have no interest in oval rings. There's not enough data saying they work. As in a very, very hard yes or no, they work. Some people say they work, some people say they work for them, that's great. Uh, they do throw some power meters out, which does give some people the impression that your power has been increased, when in fact, it's just your power meter's gone wonky. Um, yeah, no, I've got no interest in. I like tech, but I, I draw the line at egg-shaped chain rings. <laughs> All right. Look, the numbers are bouncing. I've just flicked my eyes across to the, the numbers there and there. They're not too bad on the sustain stuff. Is Lou tuning in or is Lou watching over your shoulder? That is the question. Why do they make power why do they make power meters misread? I don't think it's on purpose. I think companies try and make accurate power meters. It's a difficult task. So your bathroom scales, if you're standing on your bathroom scales, you jump down, get naked, you stand on them and stand very, very still. And you expect a certain level of accuracy. Now, clothed, not naked, on a bike, unless you're into that, we almost expect the same level of accuracy on something that's moving at 100 RPM and not just being stepped on and held down, it's been like the, the, the force on it is continually changing. Power meters are hard. But don't get me wrong, power meters are a solved problem. A watt is a watt. How you produce that watt is an art form in itself. You can produce that watt any way you like. But a watt is a standard unit of measurement. I've said it a few times before in other places. People say that accurate power meters don't matter as long as it's consistent and reliable. That is true in isolation. So if you only have to have one power meter, and that's all you compare yourself to, and only yourself, and you never upgrade a power meter, you've only ever got one power meter on one bike, or you swap that same power meter across multiple bikes, that's fine. The analogy I use, and sorry to bring up the same stories over and over again, but I like this one. If you were to build a house from scratch yourself with a, a tape measure that was 10% off, now you cut every bit of wood, you follow all the plans, you do everything with that one single tape measure. In isolation, fine, your house will be built, your doors will close and open, hopefully. Your windows will go up and everything will be perfect because everything has been built with that offset. As soon as you introduce something external, such as a door from somewhere else, a window from somewhere else, or someone else comes to live in the house with a different unit of measurement, a different ruler or a tape measure, Things go bad. It's the same with power meters. Having to do that offset all the time? No, you shouldn't need to do that. Anyhow. Suji do power pedal power meters. Is that a question or a statement? If they do, that's cool. Go bad. Mm. Leaning Tower of Pisa has an offset. I can't go bad on this though. Look at the guns on this guy. Oof, now I'm gonna get up the road before he swag smacks me back. All right, nine minutes in. <clears throat> now this is pre-offset. Hey, those numbers are looking all right. Ha, ha ha. Best value for money power meter. Anything that's correct. I would spend any dollars on something if you can guarantee it was correct and accurate. That's the quest. Ben, good to see you. Uh, ben, in follow-up at 320 watts. Make sure your shift has good front brakes. 
is the ultimate answer. Because <laughs> the sheer rear brake, man, never any good. When did I know there was a new kicker coming? When is Wahoo telling you their secrets for us? The normal people, you know. That's a good question. I do get access to that info under NDA or embargo as media. So if you wonder why so many companies or media companies go out with info on the new products at exactly the same time, it's because they've got heads up. I'm lucky enough to get heads up. Hey, that power number's looking good. Lucky enough to get heads up and access to the product. Mark, if you type in Zwift or GP Llama over on Twitch, I should come up. I think it's twitch.tv slash GP Llama. Oh, what was the, okay, the KOM was 138, fine. It would have sucked if I was one second off the jersey. Woo. The back of the bike wants to over into a dead turn, yeah. And the hard thing about having a, a TT bike or a tri bike, with car, if you don't train on your race wheels, on race day, the braking performance will be different. And it's at, on race day, you don't want anything different. You don't want to have to think about your bike on race day. You want it to be inbuilt, automatic. I've been caught out a few times, sailing into a, uh, if you've ever overcooked a corner though, just keep it upright, keep it straight. Don't, if you break on a corner, yeah, never fun. I only crashed the, the, the shiv once in a race. That was just through fatigue. Final corner at um, the Wanger Tour, 2013 it might've been, 2000, yeah, 2013 I think it was. Final corner, like f probably 300 meters from the line. Sailed around, it was a tailwind, so I was going faster than normal. So we're sitting on probably 55 k's an hour to this section of road for a, a right-hander. I've tipped the bike in and no idea, just ended up straight in the ground. I can only assume that was collarbone number four. <laughs> this side, I already have that one pinned. I took the top of the non-pinned bit off. That snapped the top of it off. Um, yeah. Um, I could have, it could have been brake related. I didn't grab the brakes enough or I grabbed them too hard. I just can't remember. I just went, all I know is, yeah, collarbone bingo here. Yeah. Um, went down, the bike broke, but I was so angry I got up and finished. I still beat Slane. He wasn't too happy with it. I got third. I was pretty angry at that. Um, that was, yeah, that was a pretty, a pretty hard time trial too. I remember not having a good day. Anyhow, I got a million race stories. <laughs> They're all old ones. They're not, I'm not creating any new race stories lately, so I got to draw from the old ones. Uh, alrighty. Stewardy is having a day off. Good stuff. Always earn your rest days. Uh, yeah, the Team Ineos TDF choices. How about that? So what? No Froom Dog and no G. Oof. Um, That's interesting. But look, I, I guess the, the team selectors and Ineos know the cards they've got and know the form people have on the team. So I just know the names and know their past history. Um, so there's no doubt that um, the selectors have made the right choice for them. But it's a weird, what a year though, what a year 2020 has been. It's just, if I was gonna release a product, I'd hate to call it 2020. People will look back on this and go, hey, I think that might be why the Kicker 5 is the Kicker 5. The Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 came out, didn't it? Though there's not a lot of air traffic at the moment, so not a lot of system resources used. People are saying that Flight Sim's brilliant. We'll have to have a look. But before I get too deep into just shooting the wind next to T-Rex here, we shall stop, do an offset of the two meters I have on the bike. And get stuck into this llama lap so you can watch me suffer just a little bit. All right. So the Suji has the Shimano rings on it. 
just brilliant. I love Shimano chain rings. Chain rings. Oh, and Dior. I'll steal that. The numbers were good. I really didn't even need to do a zero, but we shall do it. And here's a tip. If you want to do a double zero, you can just press, it says calibration successfully. You can just press the calibration, the same button again, and we'll redo another one. It'll send another command. Oh, that only works with the button press, doesn't it? Because the touch screen doesn't have buttons to do that. Uh, okay, we're zeroed on the Asiomas there on the bike. That one is called the Suji. And I will have to line that up again. <laughs> it's just a webcam with a, <laughs> a piece of gr uh, green pa I, I should, uh, I've got to have a behind the scenes camera. It's hilarious. Okay, one, two, three, one, two. We're good, we're good. Right. Um, so yeah, the, how I've got that showing on screen, sitting on a bit of green uh, craft paper, looks like a note. It does, doesn't it? It's sitting on a bit of green craft paper with a webcam looking down on it, and I've I've just uh, propped it and put the word Suji above it, so it should come out in all these. It does. Awesome. <laughs> it's all tricks. The Llama Lab has all the tricks. So I hope everyone is well. Everybody in Melbourne, uh, our thoughts are with you guys as well. Being in lockdown, retail being shut, not being able to go for more than 5Ks from home. That sucks. Um, I hope you've, you've found Zwift or found some outlets to get some, uh, some workouts done or something like that because, yeah, that's, uh, that sucks. We're in stage, we're one step below Melbourne because we are in the country. Look at those numbers. I'm going to stop here. Well, now, now they go a bit out. Thank you. Cool. Oh, damn. Um, don't go behind the scenes and ruin the illusion. It's like finding out, finding out about Santa. Oh, come on. I was going to live stream in a Santa suit. What do you want the nurse's costume? Which one? In the chat, let me know. <laughs> Kidding. Kidding. Unless you're a face mask manufacturer or Wahoo. Hell yeah, as I said on the uh, interview I had with Restream.io the other day on their live show, things are good for cycling. For cycle sales, for indoor cycling across the board, any platform are doing really well. But I think it's, it's when we have to be careful not to celebrate because there are so many other industries being really, really hard hit. The loose is noticed. <laughs> that might be a members only ride. <laughs> uh, all right, at 20 minutes, we'll kick off this, this erg session at 200. So I've been doing some of my own personal training rather than just testing as training, just some of my own training, just to step the volume up a little bit. And that's the, all those GP Llama Fiverr workouts that I've been doing. And uh, it's really helped with the Llama Lab test because the Fiverr test is, I think it's 255, 270 for five minutes and then 300, 300, 300 for five minutes. Which is all I've got in the legs for now. Is Hambini in the chat? There we go. Uh, Hambini, I did get those bearings sorted um, in regard to what I put in the Faveros. Good pickup on the C, I think it was, which was those bearings. By the way, Hambini bearings is the man. He's the man. Um, the C was rated for a higher heat tolerance, which is not really applicable for the pedals. But I put them on anyway. Uh, no additional play, because I, I guess the bearings are so small anyway. Numbers are fine, so I'll leave those in. Um, I've still got to get onto Asioma and find out exactly what brand bearing they use. I don't think it would be premium brands like all things they'll not there's anything wrong with the bearings but I'm sure they have a budget to stick to anyway they're fine they're fine uh, what gels or food do I use for training or live streams Jeremy it depends on the length uh, for these just water and some um, Uncle Toby's bars <clears throat> Uh, 
All right, one minute, we'll get stuck into it. Um, we'll go the desert flats for this. So with the stunts all, we cannot select where we're going to go. We will just have to use the keyboard. There we go. Okay. Apologies if I've missed any of your questions, uh, but feel free to jump in. These streams, why I stream these is because of the chat. It's heaps of fun. It makes my time go a lot faster. Um, one-on-one -on -one time with people who support what I do, which I love. And I don't have answers for everything. And I probably learn more from the chat than people get answers from me from the chat. So this is why I do these. They're heaps of fun. Okay, so it's... No, no, thank you for the China cycling. So it's not Suji, it's Sa... Sagayi. Sagayi. Is that... How are we going for that? Sagayi? You're going to have to really dumb it down for me. And that's okay, my grasp of words in English and communication is not that great. Did we go past 20 minutes? We did. Sagayi. Sagayi. Sagayi? It has to be fast. I talk too fast. But I do appreciate that. So yeah, no, not to be that guy. That's totally fine. Absolutely cool. DI2 or SRAM? Come on, DI2 all the way. I'll get my video done on this bike's upgrade the other day to DI2. So much fun. So much fun tinkering with the bike. Speaking of not so much fun, let's get this erg mode sorted. Uh, is it worth getting stages left only? Uh, Gen 3, yeah, stages. So left, left only Shimano cranks I've had good results with. They measure exactly what they measure. It's the left side doubled. Um, so accuracy-wise, they've been good. Um, Gen 3 is the way to go for stages, for the better radios. E for erg. Uh, I'm a lab test. I've got to change. My FTP's all set wrong here for when I did this. It was 341 at the time. It's not that now, but it gets me to see 200 there, 250 there, and where I need here. Boom, we're on. Uh, how to hack to get a sprint shifter with a DI2 disc shifter? Not possible. There's only the two ports. I have those exact shifters you're talking about here with the extra port for the sprint shifter. They're not just not compatible. You may be able to, well, there's, there are individual shifters. I'll look into this in another video. If it's any excuse for me to go buy some more DI2 stuff, I'm happy. Uh, good question on Su, uh, Sagayi and Oval Rings. I'm not sure on the Oval Rings. I would go with no. Always assume that something isn't compatible with Oval Rings if they don't explicitly say. Okay, for this test, we are small ring at the front. I think it's a 39. Middle of the cassette at the back. Chain has been cleaned. So we're running a straight chain line. New DI2, well, second hand DI2, pre owned DI2 installed on this bike the other day. We are good. We are good. Are we ready? Let's get stuck into it. Boom. 10 minutes. All right, let's go. Oh. oh, that works. I wasn't, I didn't think about where the power numbers would show on screen versus the other stuff. Hey, it's like not looking too bad. Now the kicker, even with power smoothing turned off, still artificially smooths power. I'll dive right into this in my video on the kicker five. So I think the numbers in erg well, they're looking pretty good if you ask me, but you won't get the same kind of jumps that you're seeing with the Suji and I'm seeing in front of me here with the Asiomas. But it's looking close. Jerry, here he is. Jerry was the star of the show for my video on the Sturzo and what other people see on their streams. Good to see you, mate. So I expect the Suji to bounce around a little higher, a little lower. But overall, oh, someone's llama sitting. Get off the wheel. <laughs> now, I don't even need to swerve. 
If someone hasn't got a steering mechanism, I can sit on this center line and then I get a draft. Uh, no keyboard supported by Apple TV for Zwift. Uh, for left sides, is four eyes better than stages? I'd go with much of a muchness. I've had success with both for the single sided stuff. Okay, erg mode smoothing on or off is within the Wahoo app. It's on by default, which tricks a lot of people because erg mode smoothing on Wahoo will then, if your set point is, see it says 200, it locks onto 200. Very artificially. Well, if it's accurate, it's accurate. <laughs> That's not going to be damn good. Uh, where it usually trips people up with is if they go to another trainer or they look at power from another meter and say that it's jumping all over the shop. Strava question. My Strava goal is to beat your Hume Vale golf course climb. Uh, Michael, golf course. That's after the bridge, the top. Is that 15 minutes or 14? And who holds the comm? I don't think I have that anymore. What you need, set of 28 mil tires. If it's still as rough as what it used to be, that'll be a start. Pacing that one's hard. But just simply look at the, the speed profile or the power profile of someone else who's done that KOM and you'll know where things get hard and where things go fast and you can back it off. But break it down into segments. If you want to get, a good place to start is to break it down into one kilometer segments and ride each section optimally. I don't run on Zwift, no. I don't know where to put the power meter. Kidding, I've got a stride, but I haven't used that for a while. The bike shop across the street has a Garmin 830 bundle and a Wahoo Element bundle for sale at the same price. Is it the Element Roam? The 830 and the original Element really won't compete. Michael, if you ride into the data, have a look at best bike split. That'll give... I wish that was around back in the day. If it's just Element, no. They can't be selling the 830 and the Element bundle for the same price. Good luck to them if they are, but enjoy the 830 if they are too. <laughs> Feature-wise, the Element, Bolt and Roam for sensor compatibility. GPS accuracy I think is pretty good on across all. I think they're all pretty much the same. Um, but the Roam's where it's at to compete head to head with the 830. There's still a ton of extra stuff the Garmin uh, ecosystem does, but a lot of the time people don't use that. They just want something that works. I'm just noticing, noticing something here with the data. The power numbers look good between the... I've forgotten how to say it. Sugi. I'll go back to the comments. But the cadence is a little different. Cadence from the kicker is estimated from the pedal stroke. Well, it's a little high, I think, of a cadence. Uh, Asiomas are reporting. Ninety six. Yeah, okay. So the kicker fire looks a little high. Just a smidge. Do I drift? As in around corners? No. That's a reference to the, the cornering, it's lane selection, pretty much. So if I was to go on this lane here and then not touch the steering, it just goes straight and holds that line. So it doesn't go straight. Uh, Tim, I'm set to loop back to the Neo 2T. Uh, they've got a new firmware update. That was, uh, I think it was a few weeks ago. So I should just tie up some loose ends with a, a few follow-ups on that and a few others. 
Um, so there have been no major issues that I've seen. I keep track of all the forums and the user groups. And if there's anything major, you'll see those light up quite a bit and consistently reported as being off or wrong. That all looks pretty good there. Oh, sorry, you can run on Zwift. I don't run on Zwift. So I thought that was an asking me question. Oh, chop. Sorry, guys. If you don't steer on Zwift, what determines how the character corners? Good question. The AI, it just bounces you around. It'll give you center line. If you're in a bunch, you'll be sort of washed around a bit. You can still move forward and back by pushing the power. Look at those numbers. That's not bad. Again, remembering the kicker will be a little bit smoothed and the other one will bounce around a little bit. Not bad. Does steering make you slower because of the side to side movement? Technically it could if you steered the wrong way. Having said that, if you go the optimal line, you travel less distance. If you're fat, you go wide. That's it. So I can't pick a, a gap between this and this. There's that lateral collision detection. Or as I call it, throw on elbows. I can't get through. I'm gonna wait and then go at the inside line. My partner pulls up in the pedal stroke she's doing so it gets double the cadence up again. Uh -huh. Vince, that'd be an interesting one to look with a uh, some kind of analyzer to see how things work because it goes through the the wave of power that'll be like that Whew. 10 minutes almost done this is good uh kick of five derivative of xr kick of course side by side well if you watch each video one after the other or if you could open up three screens, there we go. No. <laughs> it's difficult doing head to head videos because it comes more about personal preference, and my preference is skewed like you wouldn't. I've ridden all the trainers, and I love the Le Mans Revolution more than anything. But people don't want to hear that. They want to hear this sucks, this works, this is the best. But it's not as easy as that. If you have any questions on either of those, I'm happy to, to give you my take on it. The kicker core is still doing very well. The XR has really stepped up from a mid-range train to the top of the range. Uh, the Flux S come with spaces for a 10-speed set. Possibly. I'm not sure. But a spacer for a 10-speed cassette is dirt cheap. Any bike store would probably give you one. If you don't have one. Common issues with the kicker four. I've heard they fixed everything. Yeah, look. A recently produced, sorry, kicker four. Here, kicker four, not kicker. A recently produced kicker four should be fine. Sorry, hang on. You said kicker core version four. There's only one version of the kicker four, but there's also a kicker four. Look, in regard to those as a general statement, I think they're on top of them. And if you do encounter any issues, their support should be all over it. And time will tell with the Kicker 5. This is probably my 20th hour on the Kicker 5. Trying to break it. Numbers, oh. I sleep well at night when those numbers look that good. The shortest route up hairpins and the climbs steeper than the middle of the road. They don't change the gradient uh, figure, no. Haven't gone to Innsbruck yet. I'm, I still have to do the full Octobahn. Now I'm working. Let's get the second fan on.
Oh, those numbers. Yes. That's where it's at. It's always going to be a little bit of difference. But not enough to make me pull up short and not be happy. Sturzo is more fun for now. Just cruising around. Hill climbs though, definitely the climb or the kicker bike that tilts. 10 more badges to go. And I've saved the best to last. They're all the long ones. The software I use to compare Power Meter data, it's my favorite website on the internet, the DCR Analyzer tool, where we can compare multiple power meters as an overlay and see how they stack up. I think I've said that line a million times <laughs> in my videos. Um, so the DCR tool by Ray and Co allows loading up of multiple fit files and it just puts them as an overlay. It, it's simple, it works, and best of all you can spot trends very, very quickly. I've got a whole video on how I do compare power meters. Zero offset, straight chain line. Uh, maybe I talk about the optimal working zone for flywheel speed. I can't recall. It's a half hour video. It's a long watch. Hardware issues with a kicker bike, none. A little bit of creaking. A bit like me. You just have to oil the joints every now and then. That's about it. I have an upgrade coming for the kicker bike. It's my own. Bit of a hack upgrade. I have the parts for that already. I just need to get the camera out. YouTube watchers should check out his stream on Twitch. It's so much clearer. Mrs. Rule, you are on the money. Before you do that though, make sure you hit subscribe or hit like or become a channel member. That really helps out. And then you can go over to Twitch. Twitch is minimally monetized. That's hard at 168 heart rate. But YouTube is where everything's at for me. WSSW, back at you. That'll affect the warranty. Hey, I'm happy to take one for the team. I'm not one to, as long as it doesn't affect my terms and conditions. <laughs> or I use the word Peloton in the video. <laughs> It's a simple upgrade, but I think it's worth doing. What, five minutes, oof. Wait till we get the 450 over and unders. Then I'm gonna suffer. Streaming both, thank you. <laughs> Let's go back into town. Alrighty. Four minutes and 52 seconds. Jason, yeah, Erg on the stages bike. We're on the case. Well, by we, there's a few people, a few owners who have support tickets in. There's dialogue happening with stages about that. So we're on it. We're on it. Um, one thing that could fix that a lot would be if Zwift had three second averaging in ERG. Zwift doesn't do three second averaging in ERG. But it's only stim mode or free ride that the three second average appears. It looks smooth now because of what the kicker's doing. Oh, do I speed sometimes? We were uh, at a time trial on the Q Boulevard once. It has a 50 kilometer speed limit. And the police were there 
showing the roads off or marshalling or having a presence. And I said, are we allowed to ride higher than 50k an hour during this race? And the policeman just laughed and asked me the question that we all get, how much is your bike weigh, mate? <laughs> so we sped during that race. I think top speed through Q there is about 75. None of that questions are good. Keeps my mind off having to push the pedals. <clears throat> uh, not possible for the sensors on the studs to be put on anything else. It requires physical movement of the little PCB that picks up the magnet polarity on the pivot point. Somebody in chat the other day said it was a, uh, was it a hole sensor? Or something similar? Oh, come on. Two minutes. Come on, come on. Uh, this test with the IQ squared pedals. I believe so. It was only the single sided though. Uh, advice for getting started with an amateur cycling club. Turn up, just turn up, turn up and race. Or go to the training, it'll just all fall into place. And if you do any training rides, races are exactly the same. You're seeing criteriums, a lot of people will lose it on the last lap. Last lap in a criterium, you still got to ride your bike. <laughs> Nothing changes. It took me probably a year or so to get my head in the right space for a final lap of a crit. Okay. Uh, the Sugiyi power meter, which I cannot pronounce. It's a China. China company, Chinese company, manufacturing spider-based power meters. I think this one's 329 US, which isn't too bad. And if you can see the numbers there, that's not looking too bad at all. All right, 55 seconds into a short sprint, four minutes off, overs and unders, and We'll see what else we do from there. If I can hit 1100 in the sprint, I'll be happy. Max is good. How we go? I saw twelve hundred. Saw twelve hundred in the Astyons. A bit slow on the cadence, but <laughs> makes the graphs look better. <laughs> Very similar to the uh, Power to Max, yes. Some trainers do have trouble with really short stuff. They base their power calculations on uh, cadence. If that accelerometer cadence isn't, uh, doesn't stabilize for a second or two, the powers are a little bit out. Yeah, what did the power meter do? I, I was in another world. We'll have a look at that. Didn't get anywhere near. Okay, that is still on three second average. 
Whereas what you're seeing on screen there from the kicker is, I think, raw. We'll have a look though. If there's any issues identified with that, I'll loop back in a sim mode ride and do a couple of other sprints, not straight after a erg session like that. New bike day, nice one. Doesn't matter how fit you are, you can still enjoy a new bike day. <laughs> uh, numbers wise, okay, I think we're looking good. Cool. Uh, I think this is bedded in pretty, pretty well. I did a, a sprint early on in the day after about 10 minutes, and it's been stable since then. Uh, Quarks, Ram, the rest of Altegra. Yeah, sure. Yep, I run that configuration. I run the uh, the D0 crank. Oh, sorry, the D0 power meter with a dub crank. That works fine. This bike here, which is the second TCR, I've got a 24 mil bottom bracket, so I can swap things out with a little bit more compatibility. Uh, yeah, I'd like to get onto power to max. They're just, a, I don't know. People seem to love them. If I can get a hold of a Power to Max unit, I'm happy to give it a shot. I've got the bikes and the equipment and the protocol to test it. Um, all right, uh, running videos, no. Not my lane. <laughs> Early on, I did a few how-to videos on running with just the technology. Uh, how to get people up and running, just as literally up and running. Just to have content there about it. But to be honest, that's not really my thing. And no one was really low views, low interest. Reliable nutrition channel for cycling? No. There's... I think if you want some good performance-based... Uh, Information, it's always the Train and Road podcast and the content those guys do. Absolutely brilliant stuff. That's probably your go-to that I'd say. I mean, and who would know that stuff more than those guys? They, they're, they're on the money. Coach Chad is uh, yeah, it's good to listen to. Alrighty, here we go. Overs and unders. These are fun, but they're short. Let's see how things hold up. Wax indoor train? No, you never, I wouldn't never wax a train for indoor a chain for indoor cycling. It's too messy. It goes everywhere. Unless you can go outside and then break the chain in. All right, smooth. How are we doing for the best? What's oh, erg stabilizers? A bit jumpy. There we go. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, Stephen Cousins, uh, was it Film My Run? I think does some, a lot of running content. Jump on the Zwick running groups on Facebook and you'll find them pretty quick. The DO2 project on the second bike is the one I'm riding right now. And it's a dream. It's awesome. Well worth spending too much money on. The numbers crossed over a bit then. But for Erg Transition, that does, that's going well. I mean, it's a kicker. It operates like a kicker. And I gotta get through these. Not bad. It's going to bounce around a little bit. <laughs> Sweet. What a good day. One more of those. Hang on. I'll get to your questions. I just got to get to this 450 watts first.
<laughs> That's pretty good. Awesome. <clears throat> Correct. The uh, the older TCR I have is a medium large, and the good one that I have the new one is just a medium. On the medium large, you'll see in the videos, the saddle is push forward. The stem's a little shorter, so I can get away with riding it either. I'm really in between my bikes. Okay, this is sim mode for two minutes. And then we'll go into some free, some freestyle erg, where I do change gears in erg. That four minutes 30 is a flywheel speed test. And you watch this thing lose its mind in the last 90 seconds. Pretty much like all trainers do, but I'll, I'll show you that in a sec. Oh, thank you for subscribing. Much appreciated. Woo. Alrighty. So the next one's at only 225, which is a little easier. You see a lot of pros ride smaller bikes. Like one, they say one frame size smaller or something. I kind of do the same, but not because the pros do it. It just feels better for me. I'd rather ride a bike with a, a 110 or a 120 mil stem, a lot lower at the front. The medium large for Giant has a massive head tube on it, but I couldn't get low enough. The mediums have a 12.5 centimeter head tube, I think. So a little better. Am I Islamic? No, I'm Islama. I am Islama. All right, easiest gear on the block, which is a 28, I think, on there. And I'm spun out. So small ring, 28 on the back. This is the slowest flywheel speed we can get at about 90 to 95 RPM. Oh, my gear tuning is not too bad. Okay, the power on the screen is from the kicker. You see on the main screen and the sugi, I should just even stop pronouncing it is the other one. That's the Omazon on the screen. So things are bouncing around here quite well. There's no real need for me to test small ring mid cassette because that's exactly what I do for the main portion of the Llama lab test. So from here I'll go big ring and cross chain a bit. And here's where you might start seeing a little bit of separation. drop there in three minutes. So things are quite steady. This feels like climbing a hill though. You've really got to push the pedal all the way over. All right, we'll go. Couple down, big ring on the front, spin this thing up. Uh, Vitus, no, I'm not, not aware of that brand. Okay, things are separating a little, huh? Actually, it's not too bad if I'm smooth. Numbers look all right. It's a lot bouncier though. Wait for the last 90 seconds. So it's big ring, or probably 19 on the back. Not bad, but entirely different pedaling though. I'm not slogging over the top. Same watts, different training. Uh, kick a five, yeah, it's going well.
I have one more trick up my sleeve that I have to toy with though before I do my final take on the kick of five. <laughs> and it's a question I haven't seen asked yet, but goddamn, I want to know the answer. So I'll be getting to the bottom of it soon. All right, ready for the fun? 53.11, flywheel through the roof, same cadence. And you can see that the trainer is, what, what? <laughs> see, I'm almost well outside the, the creek working zone for Erg. It's losing its mind. And you can see on the graph how, how jumpy that is. It's like pedaling down a, a very steep incline this way. So I'm still doing the watts. The train is just losing its mind. That's nothing to be too concerned over though. Most trainers do exactly this. But what we need published is working zones for flywheel speeds. Because if you're in sim mode, flying down a hill like this, and it still can't report accuracy, like jumping up and down, that's not good. We are done. All right, cool down time. Any questions that I've missed, please let me know. Sarah's trainers don't get that jumpy, but they overestimate. Yeah, it's trainers do different things at that speed. They all do very different things. I have a mullet, rock and roll. Little Maxi Miller has a mullet. Little llama. Mainly because we haven't given me the haircut yet. All right, questions. Uh, I have a kicker three, should I upgrade? So you have the kicker 17. Uh, supported by the climb. Uh, doesn't have the quiet belt though. Other than that, ride feel, compatibility, it's all good. It's all good. If you're looking at upgrading and you don't want all the new features, maybe look if someone's upgrading an 18. All right, let's have a look at the Llama Lab test here <laughs> with my other overlay on the screen there. So Llama Lab test, warm up there. Up the hill in Titans Grove, warms everything up. We stop, zero offset. I talk way too much through here and I should have started that sooner, but it is what it is. <laughs> uh, Smart Desk is still coming. It's looking good though. Vaughn's got it at the moment. She took it on me. She wheeled it in front of the kicker bike. It's a problem with having two cyclists in the house. Things go missing. Steady state, 200. What I'm looking for here is any drift. Um, as I said, I think two nights ago on my stream, I'm looking for drift through here. Temperature or through here once it steps up. Once I compare the meters, you can see the kicker is really, really flattens the curve. There, uh, my heart rate's interesting. Comes down a bit through here, I relax. I always get a little nervous leading into the sprint. Yeah, there's nothing changes through here, nothing at all changes here, except I know the sprint's coming. Look at that, heart rate goes up. Humans are strange animals. Chill session through here, further my overs and unders, topping out just after the last one, and then into that session there. You notice, same watts here as here. Probably, well, actually, probably a little bit more through there, wasn't it, on the actual pedals. So even though the trainer reported less watts through here, look at the heart rate difference. I'm working harder. Hmm, interesting. Anyway, eight session, that all worked well. Uh, a bad session is when the doorbell rings. <laughs> I've got to step off the trainer. Do I work together with Rainmaker? Uh, no, technically we don't work together. We're good friends. We're, we're good mates. We exchange uh, messages daily. Is the Elite Suto good? Uh, yeah, it appears to be a very popular trainer. 
Um, it's one of the out-of-the-box trainers. It just has everything ready to go. Uh, the Doretto XR does the same. Pre-built, cassette on. Um, all you need to do is make sure the axle is correct for your bike. I haven't seen a bike yet that comes with through axle by default. The adapters are on the boxes now. Everything is supported. Um, but the kicker is that that's the easy one to do. It's just these two little the adap adapters just slide straight in. That's so go fast. I'll go fast around the corner. It's a downhill. Adrenaline. That's it. But it's only a Zwift sprint. <laughs> I'm steering currently. Yes, you can see my. Magnus, yes, the sound level between a SB20 and the kicker bike is noticeable. Yes, the kicker bike does have a slight hum to it, whereas the stages bike is silent. It really is silent. It's not obnoxious, but you know it's there. Though. Uh, Zada, no. I... <laughs> to be honest, the interactions I've seen that the people have had with Zada has been this bit of an anonymous black hole and some quite demanding time zones and things. I, not something that I'm involved with. Or would like to be actually, given what I've seen. Uh, but I guess for Zwift racing and online racing in general, it needs some kind of uh, policing. I guess you'd call it. Considering a used Dretto. Some lag when applying resistance, any thoughts? Uh, yeah, Dretto's or Elite Trainers over Bluetooth seem to be pretty good. Uh, the XR's fantastic. Um, I wonder if Elite have a change log for any firmware updates. But now they've got the Upgrado app, you can upgrade Elite Trainers for newer firmwares and mappings and things. Um, you can't go too wrong with a Doretto. Um, they were very popular. They were a game changer at the time when they were, they were out. It has stepped up to the Doretto X and now the XR also stepped up in pricing to become their premium, premium trainer. The most silent trainer, the one I'm on. Uh, your kickers, the newer kickers, kicker core, H3's pretty quiet, Neo's. I'm just having a normal conversation now, riding among them. The noisiest thing I can hear is my chain, and that was just oil yesterday. So, thanks for dropping by, Magnus. Enjoy work. Don't work too hard. <laughs> Save some energy for your next ride. Upgraded, from, upgraded to a kick of fire from a Flux 2. Good upgrade. You've seen higher watts, easier to hold group rides in racing. Yeah. Look, the Flux, I've said in my video on the Flux 2, or was it the Flux S? I think it was the Flux S. They just feel a little sluggish. The internal gearing of a Flux just feels a little, ugh, a little labored. You gotta drop another gear or two up on the back to make it a little easier. Um, I have the Flux, Ray did a review recently of the Flux 2.1, the refreshed version of the Flux 2. I have one here. Um, I've got to loop through one day. Uh, cadence sensor? No, I don't have a cadence sensor on the bike. Uh, the two power meters that I have, the Asiyam Enduros and the Sugu... I'm useless at pronunciation. I will go back and find out how to really pronounce that. I'll call it the Suji for now. That has inbuilt cadence sensors. And the other cadence sensor you're seeing on screen is coming from the kicker. Kicker fire. Oh, now I'm in free ride. Maybe we can drop some ride ons. Am I tired? Yeah. I'm a little bit tired. This is the second ride. Double days are always good. I haven't seen many other people steering. No. I haven't. I'm always on at weird hours, though. Impressions of the Su Sugi Spider. I've had a, another one for about six months or more. If you're playing the long game on my Instagram. I was riding around in summer with it. Had some initial issues with spikes. They solved those. Then I had some issues with some auto zeroing going crazy. They've solved those. Um, and they've sent over the four 
four bolt version because I love Shimano chain rings. They just look chunky. I don't know whether they're any good, let's be honest. I don't have the machines to test that other than my legs, but the changes are good and it looks awesome on the bike. Saga ye, Saga ye, Saga ye. I will try and get it right. Have I stopped the podcast? Ah, yeah, I've, I've stopped producing the podcast. Uh, it's Ray's podcast all along, Ray. It's Ray's uh, distribution and was, I think, the DCR podcast. We renamed it for the Fitfile. I was doing the recording and the managing and the chopping up and, and all of that. That was just taking up a little bit too much of my time for uh, for the what we got back on it. So, see guy. I am on Reddit, yes. Many good arguments on Reddit. <laughs> no, Reddit's a good place. Lots of good brains, lots of good uh, points of view. Look at those numbers, that's pretty good. Uh, good enough for me to be happy anyway. Looking forward to the data. Yes, indeed. That's exactly what I'm doing. You've just cut and paste my video description. <laughs> Sigi -yi. Sigi -yi. Yeah, I'll try. I think I'll start the video with... I'll do my best to pronounce this, but I'm going to go with... <laughs> Aussie on the podium. Hang on, what have I missed? Whereabouts? Tour? Or... Or... Peter, back to your question. Taking money out of consideration, I love taking money out of considerations. It means whatever the answer is going to be, it's going to be I ride outside on an island I've brought for myself and a few good mates. And we don't worry about indoor cycling. That's the answer to that one when money's on the consideration. But you did ask about a traditional trainer or a, or a bike trainer, what do I prefer? It's line ball between a kicker bike and my bike because they're both pretty much DI too. Hey, Johnny. Now does Johnny have the steer? He does this. Does he have steer? Look out! Johnny has steering. Here we go. Uh, so Peter, just <laughs> before I get too excited, chasing Johnny. <laughs> it really is line ball. The kicker bike feels like my bike. I do like that. But I also do like tinkering with my. As you, if you've watched the channel, I like tinkering with my bike, snuff grading and changing things around. It's new bike day. Every <laughs> look at Johnny steering. <laughs> Can we shoulder check? There we go. He's got bigger legs than me. I can't knock him too hard. There we go. So there we go. Someone else steering. Excellent. Oh, those DO2 changes are so good. <clears throat> My video on the upgrade of this bike to DI2 is coming out. I'll work tomorrow all day on it. I'm going to see if we can get it out. It's just a bold guy in the garage tinkering with the bike. I had fun. I hope people enjoy watching it when I put it out. Oh, there he goes. He's attacked. I'm on the wheel though. Don't worry. What was if I attack? Oh, I can't do the inside. There we go. Inside attack. <laughs> And he's the only other rider who can ride the center line with me. <laughs> oh, this is too much fun. Oh. <laughs> Oh, all right, I'm done. Thanks, Johnny. I'll let you go, mate. Am I getting money from YouTube? Absolutely, I'm taking all their money. As much of it as I can. The little ads you see in front of my videos, they don't pay a lot, but if a video has a few thousand views, it pays okay. It allows me to keep doing what I'm doing. So that answers your question just the once, even though you've asked it three times. 
Just chill on the same questions, mate. Happy to give you an answer. Happy to give you an answer. So the way YouTube works, it's very transparent to what I do. I just make videos on what I like doing and what I find interesting. And I hope a few other people find them interesting too. I think they do. And from there, with the content, there's certain tags. So this video is tagged Zwift or Power Meter or Kicker and all of that. And um, I don't deal with the advertising side of things at all. It just sits there, it's all automated. And it depends where you are in the world. So in Australia, you'll get Cadbury every now and then. Um, in the US, whatever you get over in the US. Um, and the best part about it is it allows content creators like myself just to do what we do rather than have to budget for ads or have an advertising arm or anything like that. We just create content and let it sit out there and YouTube do things. They obviously take their cut, but uh, you get Rafa ads, cool. I get the weirdest ads. I do check every now and then in Australia. But again, it take it, it's just, I think it was 0.0001 of a cent per ad shown or something. It's just so small overall because not every view is monetized. So, but it's all in volume. It's all about the volume. Which is why clickbait works and controversy. We're trying to steer clear of that. We can have evergreen content. I'm happy with that. How to take pedals off a bike. My video on that does quite well. I made that one years ago. A cheap bike for the trainer or a main bike on the trainer. Look, there's no problems putting any good bike on a trainer. If you install it correctly, you'll have no problems. I have tried to snap bikes for years on indoor trainers. I can't do it. If good bikes broke on indoor trainers, it would be a meme. There'd be a Reddit group for it. It'd be a, oh, what, another one broke, ha uh ha. -huh. That's not happening. And the companies would be like, oh, that's your Zwift bike. Is it if it's broken in two or something? Or it'd be, a, you know, it's a Wahoo sponsored bike. It, it's just not happening. It doesn't happen. Um, so yeah, good bike. And if you're spending good money on your good bike or like what I did here, I put DI2 on this bike the other day as a bit of a project, I get to ride this. <laughs> Trump ads for the next few days. As long as they're monetized well. If you pay for uh, Google, sorry, it's um, YouTube Premium. Or is it YouTube Red or they call it Premium these days? Um, I have a subscription, it's like a premium. It's like $12 Australian a month. You don't get ads on YouTube. And you can play things in the background. Uh, other questions, feel free to fire away. I'll go through to just over 40 Ks, calling down from tonight's ride. Ineos team selection for Tour de France, no Garrett Thomas, no Froome Dog. Um, I said earlier on, obviously the, the selectors know who's on form and they're going to take the, the strongest team. Is that a wise decision? I, go, I mean, I'm not in a position to comment. I can comment, but it's not going to be any good. Uh, sponsorship wise? Yeah. You gotta ask yourself. A lot of people just know Garrett Thomas and Chris Froome. They don't know any of the other writers. Yes, I know the other guy won, but. So, marketing wise, who knows? I don't think they've missed the money though. They've probably got enough. It's a big, it's a big get. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> congratulations, Yamo Fisma. Does <laughs> shaving my head make you more aero? Mm, I'll go with yes. Makes me a lot cooler indoors though, for sure. Like, so the only problem I have is it disconnects sometimes when you stop pedaling. Hmm. Check the firmware on the Flux 2. Open the Taxi Utility app, make sure it's got the latest firmware on there. Shouldn't disconnect when you stop pedaling. Would I sell Llama jerseys? Yeah, people have asked about Llama kit. I'm all for it, but I don't have any creativity to, first of all, to design one. And being in Australia, I'm not in a position to have a manufacturer ship me a lot and then ship things back out. It needs to be drop ship online and the biggest uh, issue, it needs to be cheap. 
but good quality and I've yet to come across any kit manufacturer that does, I guess, what well, on-demand creation or production that's relatively cheap. Uh, but I haven't ruled it out at all. Uh, no, Johnny, thank you for dropping into the stream. That wasn't a stream snipe. That was really cool. I had not interacted with somebody else with the steering. But that was awesome. That was good. Yeah. We are weaving in between others. So it was like too fast, too furious. More swervous when we're dodging through traffic. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Roglic had another crash. Has he? Is that a question mark? I hope not. Ah, GP Llama kit built into Zwift. Well, that's the, that's the second stage of GP Llama kit. If we have one, we can then put it onto Zwift. Or we can, we can lobby Zwift to get it put in. There's no guarantees in this world. It would have to be popular enough. Got a request to get through. Um, I'm hoping Clubs comes along on Zwift soon. If we can have a GP Llama Club, and I can schedule these rides that people can choose themselves to join, that'd be cool. But we'll wait for Clubs. Hopefully the wheel starts spinning there soon. First look down right board at the top by Jim the Dolphin, eh? <laughs> Alrighty. As I said, 40Ks and a little bit more. Thirty-two watching over on Twitch. That's not bad. Thanks, Twitches. Sort of. I haven't. I don't think I've ever promoted my Twitch channel. Other than just telling people if they want to view a good quality stream, go to Twitch because it looks a lot better. Thirty-two views. That's cool. I like that. I can bring the chat in too from everyone. Uh, coming up soon to uh, new Oat Route. Uh, Oat Route France on Zwift, which will be. Uh, one of these 60 kilometer rides around the France map and then stage to stage one stage two Von two stage three is what the pros race up to Chateau Reynard uh, Starting September 18th, I think it is Always well attended those big events the specialized events are getting pretty well attended too But twice up Von two Ugh. or the second day is most of the way up Brutal. How are we looking for numbers just cruising along? My state's on fire again. Here in California. What was it down a bit? Oh. oh, they're lining up there. It's They're bouncing around a bit. A little bit down on the... Subji. We'll have a look later on. All right, 41 and we're done. Let's leave it there. It is half past nine at night. What am I doing? Colorado is, uh huh. All right, you might hear the free hub there ticking in and out for the uh, the noise filter kicking in. Rock and roll. Hey, look, everyone. Thanks again for coming along to a another Llama Lab test session. It's like, whoa, look out! You're gonna lose it. <laughs> Let's just grab that off the screen. Done. Oh, and they all go flying, but they've all recorded the data, that's what it's all about. Uh, more route badge rides coming up soon. It's all the long ones now. I have 10 or so to go, and they are the long ones. I was thinking of doing them during the day here, which is totally opposite times for everyone else, but I've got to do them sometime to get through them, especially now it's raining outside, it's still windy here, so we might get those done soon. I'm looking forward to the longer ones with a few hills so we can break it up. The longer flat ones, it's just a bit to get those done. Anyhow, uh, Twitch stream looks better. YouTube accepts a lot uh, a lot more bitrate. Yeah, they're both at 8,000 um, kilobits and it's the same stream for both. So yeah, drop frames next to none. Streaming at uh, it was 223 drop frames at 60 frames a sec for an hour and a half or an hour and 20. So the quality is good. The connection's good. Ah, YouTube, anyhow. Again, thank you everyone for coming along. Love the questions. Uh, I can talk about this stuff all day long and you know I do. So uh, stay tuned. Hopefully I'll get the uh, DI2 video out 
about this bike and the upgrades. I have upgrades to the upgrades already here to do again because I love tinkering with bikes. And uh, it's all good. Uh, Rob, kicker is going well. That stream tonight was comparing the kicker and the other power meter that I had on the bike. So I'll go through that and uh, we'll see how it goes. All good for the content. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your next ride. And uh, yeah, have fun. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you soon.